Okay, so here's the deal. I highly recommend if you were not in any of the other objection handling classes that you watch the video. Because everyone has different objections to handle. And since it's live and it's wherever I am in that state of that day, um, is where you get like you might get better stuff from one class than the other. Um, or uh, where I go with it might be better than today. Um, or today might be better than another. Who knows? Um, but I would definitely take the time to, if this is one of the things you want to learn more about, to take the time to watch those videos from um, today. Because I also throw out scripts and a lot of really great um, objection handles. A lot of times it seems like everyone sort of has the same objections or handles they're dealing with right now. So what we're going to do, so it's sort of like mastermind format. I'm going to go down and get an objection from each one of you. And then I'm going to go through them and okay. handle it for you. Sound good? Great. Okay. Can well. we take you with this when we go out and you handle first then too? Right? You know, like, like, <laughs> and, and I was telling, yeah, and I was <laughs> telling them before, I was like, you know, um, if my schedule allows, I never have a problem doing a buyer consult or a listing appointment as long as my schedule allows yeah. for it. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I do that all the time in LA with my other the other company I was at. Yeah. Um, and I, I did some on purpose, and I actually took one of them down here to prove a point because um, I wanted them to see how to get six percent, how the commission never comes up, and I wanted just to show them how like how it's just done where it's like so easy and I didn't even have a I didn't even give her a card I had no marketing plan for her and nothing I just had a listing agreement and I got it at six percent wow and I uh, go and, and I'm not even on the listing agreement she didn't even know my last name or company I was with like it is so smooth and easy if, if you literally just follow <laughs> there were no guns involved. <laughs> no guns involved. No wow. guns involved. And I did it twice to prove a point. So I did it up there where cool. I knew nobody. And then I brought an agent down here where he had never sold. So I would never sold up there. He had never sold down here. Still got the listing and the buyer. Cool. Yeah. So um, just trust the process. Mm. Just trust it. Um, mind you, I've been completely brainwashed. So I will brainwash you and I'll work out. Yay. Um, <laughs> So I'm going to start with you. Give me an objection. Okay. Um, so I was canvassing the other day, and there was a, a new home build. So I went up to go get to put my uh, notepad down, and the man came out. Uh -huh. And I said, oh, are you our new neighbor? And he said, oh, I'm an investor. Uh, and I said, oh, when are you putting the house on the market? When are you going to put the house on the market? And he said, you know, hopefully in the next few weeks. Uh -huh. and, um, and I said, uh, great. Are you interviewing agents? And he said, well... You know, I was gonna call the guy that I bought the house from originally um, because I promised him that I would give him the listing. Um, okay. And I said, okay. Hmm. And I said, have you talked to me? He said, no, I haven't. And you know, so I just where could I have gone with that? Because you know, I I've been there before. I think that that's fair. But I also wanted the uh, the chance to interview. Okay. So. All right, so we're, I'm going to take, I'm just going to write them all down, and then I'm going to handle the objection Fine. for you. Okay, cool. So we'll start with that one. Okay. No, you can go this way. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry. No, I'm like, no, worries. So no, 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 no. Okay. Um, probably when you meet someone at an open house, and they say that they have a family as a realtor. Like, so that happens. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So I'm going to handle that objection for you guys, but um, just in case I don't say a lot of the things I said the other day. Um, watch the videos because yeah. this one came up. Was it the first day it came up? It was the first day that a family one came up, and then I gave them a lot of different options. For okay, it. so then let's do a different objection. So um, just walk that back. You I can, well, I'll give you another one. Okay, one because it's an open house situation. Yeah, it's an so open this house. one was a different, okay. but uh, but it'll get it. You can still use it. Okay. okay. What is the objection you're getting? With friends. friends. It's kind of hard to work with friends. It's hard to work with friends. It is, yeah. Okay. Because um, they like um, they serious, but they not serious. I had a friend that wanted to buy a second house, and he's a church friend. And then I say, finally, because he say I'm serious about it. And I said, well, come to my office. I want you to come to my office and see me and my work. Now it's a friend, so it's kind of like hard. So about to get the appointment. To, yeah. Okay. Okay. We're gonna get to that one. Okay. All right. How about, um, I just don't think it's the right time with time, time of the year. Timing. I love the timing one. <laughs> okay. The traditional one, the commission. 
commission rate. Oh, the commission. I love that's what I've got. Rates. Well, it was actually it was on like a four hundred thousand condo mm -hmm. or four fifty condo, and so they were trying to like squeeze as much out of it, and they figured, well, it's going to sell fast because of this price point. Now I did a lot of um, objection handouts on this one. Did I do that? Is that yesterday or both days? You sort of you, you dealt with the commission both days. In right, I think ways. yesterday was a pretty tough one. Um, so if you have time, watch both. Watch both. Okay. Otherwise, definitely watch yesterday. Okay. Um, a book. If I haven't told you already. A book I want you to read is Fierce Conversations by Susan Scott. And I did a class on it, which is also online. Susan um, Scott? Mm -hmm. You can either listen to it or read it. So what I do to really get, you know, um, make sure I process a book well is um, I'll read it, but then I'll also listen to it. And, and a really good tip to get a, I, I like to get like three books in a week. Um, so a really good tip to, um, get more of this process in is I listen to at least one chapter on my way to work on the in my car. Okay. Um, and then it's fresh in my mind. Yeah. And you can get through a book in a week. Right. I'm a huge you know? reader. Yeah. So um, now that my drive's a little bit longer, I can get to like two <laughs> chapters, right? So um, on but on my way to work what I would do in my last position is I don't know if you guys know how to do it, but I would times it by like one and a half mm -hmm. so that they would talk faster. I was like, dude, you gotta go through the chapter. Cool. Right? And so and I can see how long it would take because it shows you on the thing. Um, to read a book faster is you can listen to it and read it at the same time and do it at uh, two times uh, huh. the um, the Very speed rich. on your on the one, oh, yeah, you know, it's life changing. You can wow. get a lot of books through. Yeah. By the way, I'm an avid reader though. You should see my home office. It's like books. It's like just books everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and I already have a book collection started for my niece. So she has like every Dr. Seuss thing in the man. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I'm in between buying this place or a mobile home. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Do you get that a lot? A couple of times, and really, I, I got, saw. So I saw I got a really turned down for a mobile home. Yeah, it's not a virus. So I, I saw a really funny thing on Facebook, and I don't remember exactly what it said. But it was something like, um, "For here to go," and it says a realtor's response to a mobile home purchase or something like that. It was hilarious. That's <laughs> um, funny. So mobile home. So I, I will. I do object to him of that though. I've actually sold a couple of mobile homes, not by. It, the fluke, you know, I was like, how did we end up here, you know, and so, but it worked out, but I'll get you that. Yeah. Um, so wanting to list with an agent that lives within the neighborhood, quote unquote, neighborhood specialist, and also being active in the HOA. Okay. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Being you active. Have people, yeah. like, evolve. Yeah, that is, like, the last so person like, you want to meeting. list with, by the way, is the HOA, nosy Nelly person. Um, mm -hmm. Well, uh, not, 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 not someone, not someone the that's board, in the board, but, but like, someone that's active, active. in the HOA meetings. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I, I know you guys seem to, if you need to do so, over Jerry, yeah. My dad's the HOA president. For okay. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm definitely going to handle that one for you, but I also want you guys to listen to some of the objection handling too. And I don't remember if it was on objection handling or farming, but I do talk about, I give like a couple scripts, but I'll do it with you guys too okay. on, um, on this, like the neighborhood specialist versus not. So, but, I, but I'm going to get really specific with your HOA because I like that one. Let's, let's be have fun with that one. Okay. Um, what do you guys? I was like back on the mobile home one, but. I know, right? <laughs> You're like, what? You're like, that was mine. <laughs> that was not mine. <laughs> You're like, hey, where do you yeah. find these? <laughs> yeah. Usually, I mean, you compare like that to like buying a car, right? It's a different yeah, I know. So like your car is like more than the house. Yeah, my, my car was more than like the house I sold to this mobile person. Yeah. Um, so I guess a couple, um, you know, nowadays with the tech companies like Zillow and Redfin, uh, they go on Redfin and they see that they can get money back. So with buyers, they see that and also with listings too. So both those. And um, also the other one would be just a conditional objection. So is right now the right time to buy and okay. should I wait till the market to dip? I'm here okay. in 2019, 2020, yeah. that'd be a good time. Okay. How can I counteract that? And I have my own ways to do it, but I want to hear yours. Perfect. And then also um, interest rates. Interest rates too. Okay. If, if so that seller, goes along with your timing too, the interest rates. And I also went over that yesterday too, but I'm going to go over it again because maybe I'll say it a different way. But I, I love that objection. And then, like, if I'm a seller, you know, the interest rates have risen. I'm, I'm at 3%. They're now at 45 I now have to pay this much more on property taxes, so on and so forth. And yeah. I just want to hear your take on it. Okay. 
perfect. Um, so we're going to talk, actually I'm going to have our lender to talk Thursday about this because this is a hot topic, um, but we're going to talk a lot about buying power, so we'll, we'll do that during this. Chris, I, I, feel like, I feel like everyone hit on mine. I liked the, that you haven't sold a home in my neighborhood one. That's one I would do. Um, also, I, I saw that, that you, as far as like first team, had the house down the street that didn't sell. What makes you feel like you can sell this house if that didn't sell? And I kind of go, you know, well, okay. it's different mm -hmm. and that, you know, and so when people do things, you know, differently and, and it's mess. so that's always a good one I think to, to do as well. Okay, we'll do that one. Okay. Cool. You guys ready? Mm -hmm. All right. So, okay, let's start with the new build one and the, the objection about like the agent mm -hmm. who is going to with that agent. So you want to go deeper into the conversation. Um, and I would, I would, I would cut going. Like you haven't talked to him. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I haven't talked to him yet. No, I'm no, no. busy. No, no, no. Oh, I thought we were both. No, no, no. No. So yeah. So <laughs> so like okay. So like he hasn't talked to him, right? Yeah. So he hasn't talked to him. Okay, great. Well, has he called you? Ah. No, he, no, he hasn't called. Okay, great. Because and this is actually a, a, a card we send out. Mm. So no news is good news unless you're you're in real estate. Right, oh, like so that. he really should be keeping you up to date throughout this whole process. And if he's not, if you, you've already told him you're gonna like you would list with him after this, after you have this built, but he hasn't talked to you since, how do you think that process is gonna go during the selling? Oh, okay, we, we're talking too fast. Oh, yeah, but we're in the stage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. okay, yeah. So, um, go here's the deal you probably spent a lot of time and money mm -hmm. on this house. Mm -hmm. You do deserve it. You, you owe yourself at least the opportunity to interview people. I'm just asking for the appointment. Uh, Ask for the appointment. I'm just asking for the appointment. Mm -hmm. Give me 30 to 45 minutes. I'd love to sit down with you, show you my marketing plan, mm -hmm. and um, let give you some updates on the market around here, and, and let you know what I, I'm willing to do for you. Mm -hmm. And... You're gonna to get to the bottom of it at that point, mm -hmm. but you gotta ask for the appointment. Just yes. go bold. So fierce conversation is a great book to read, right? Yeah. Because it's gonna get you over those humps. Because sometimes we have to first have the fierce conversation with ourselves, yeah. and then yeah. and then we have to have it with the other person. Yeah. So you just gotta go in direct and ask for the appointment. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then you could be like this bad realtor and just go. Look, I have the guts to come up and talk to you and ask for the appointment. What do you think I'm going to be like when I'm selling this thing? Yeah. Like, I'm going to be hard at work for you. I'm already hard at work for you. And we haven't yeah. had an appointment. <laughs> so, and your other guy, your other guy is just, you know, doing nothing, you know, kind of like an entitlement situation where he's just being handed it. Yeah. I'm willing to work for it. Wow. <laughs> you got the job. Okay. <laughs> but you yeah. know what I mean? You're having this first conversation, and that person, if he's a true investor and builder, he's going to be like, it's business, yeah. yeah. Wow. This, this woman, I, I, she's annoying, but I like her. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know she's annoying, but I like her, and I believe her. Mm -hmm. And I believe her, right? Mm -hmm. um, because he is, he does probably realize, you know what, she's going to work hard for me, mm -hmm. and um, she's obviously hungry. Mm -hmm. And she's gonna and she's gonna keep me posted on what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then if he says no, go okay. Well, let, before before you make that a solid no, let me ask you a question. How much longer of a conversation have you had with me just now than you've had with your other agent in the past six months? Yeah. Yeah. And then I go now. What time works best for you? Four thirty or five thirty today? <laughs> and keep going. Yeah. Be, it's okay to be pushy, especially with the builder. Okay. Yeah. Does that sound good? Do you guys like that? Yeah. Right? <laughs> okay. So next one is open house family. So one of the things that we talked about, um, and one of the other objections, how they talk, seriously, Heather, if you're watching, um, or even you could listen to it, just pull it up and listen to it in your car. Um, one of the things if you, and sometimes they just say that when you're in an open house. So I'm going to be very specific right now with the open house. Is that your objection about this uh -huh. objection? So the they love the house. It was two par her parents and the daughter. Okay. And the parents okay. said, "Honey, should we make an offer on the house?" So I was like, "Yeah, baby." Right. right. Yeah. Yes, yeah, she and, should. And right. she goes, "Okay, so what do we do next? Can you help me with that?" I said, "Absolutely. Let me grab my laptop right now. I was ready yeah. for this, right?" And then the daughter says, "Mom, but aren't you going to use Dimitri?" 
She goes, my husband's a realtor. Oh, okay. So that was the situation. Okay, great. So at that time, you realize, tell you what, um, is is your head, is he a full-time realtor or does he work in this area? Um, we, because we get this a lot, and you know, like they say, like every fifth breathing person has a real estate license in California. <laughs> of course. Of course. And he goes, I do this full-time. This is what I do. I know everything about this neighborhood, everything about this house, and, um, and I know the agent. So negotiating, um, you actually getting the house, you need, obviously you have a but a bit of a better chance because I'm friendly with the agent. Mm -hmm. um, I am willing to give your husband a referral fee, or we That's can ask her. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. we can ask her husband um, if instead of a referral fee, if he wants me to credit you the referral fee amount, mm -hmm. and you can use it towards your closing costs. Is that fair? Okay. And ask that question though. You got to get them like this. Go. Is that fair? Okay. And, and and like you know, talk them into it. <laughs> and and like okay. sales. Yeah. And so when they're asking, when you're asking a question, they have to answer it. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Yes or no? And and then you're gonna get to the bottom of it at that time. So anytime and if and by the way, because one, she actually gave you a specific like, oh, my husband's a realtor. Mm -hmm. And in that case, you may not get through it. However, and the reality of it, um, if you wanted to have a deeper conversation, you. You can be like, you know, sometimes things go awry when it is the parent representing the kids, yeah. and um, if he's not doing it full time, he just has a real estate license. Um, again, we're going to get a lot of offers on this property. You just don't know, right? Mm -hmm. So I just want to be honest with you on that. And there's a lot of emotions in buying a house. Do you really want your husband being be, having being all that? Your parents, yeah, having yeah. that all in on your shoulders. Um, or because then you could have an advocate outside. He could still get a referral fee, mm -hmm. but you have an advocate just working with you, and it's just one-on-one -on -one conversations and fighting for you. That does this every day in this area, okay. and just have like have an authentic conversation with them. Now, sometimes people will just be like, "Oh, I have a friend in real estate or whatever," when they come into an open house. Mm -hmm. Oh, great! Are they local? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh well. You know, I go, oh, got it. I go, I actually should send you this um, webinar that uh, one of our leadership team did, which I don't know if we did this one yet, but we need to do it, go on where buyers go wrong. And one of the places where they go wrong, where especially in this market when there's some multiple offers, is they try to use an outside realtor mm -hmm. or a family member um, or try to represent themselves. And what happens is uh, they don't have a relationship with the agent. And they're not an area person, so their their offer actually kind of goes to the bottom of the pile. Mm -hmm. Because that the agent is going to, one, want to work with someone they probably know or someone yep. that's in the area and local. And it's also really difficult to work with an outside area agent because they just don't have access to all the things we have access to. Mm -hmm. And they don't, they, they don't know where to go get to get things or where to order reports from and all these mm -hmm. things. And so we actually, it's going to make our shop harder mm -hmm. as the listing agent. So, um, go, but again, if this is a really close friend, if you've been working with them, I'm more than willing to give them a referral fee if that would make your life easier um, because you don't want to yeah. hurt their feelings. I can tell you as a realtor, I, we, I take referral fees all the time when someone's buying out of the area because I personally am not going to go out of the area and, and do a bad job for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's another thing that you can say. Um, sometimes they will also say that they have a relative or whatever just because they don't want to talk to you yeah. at the open house, right? And just go... No problem. Go tell you what. Um, go ahead and look around. Here's a package for you of all the other open houses in the area going on. Some comparables and listings that are a little bit above, a little bit below. I'm not sure what your price point is. Um, and, and here's a bunch of my cards. Go to all the open houses a day. And I, whether you want to work with me or not, hand them one of my cards and let them know that you already have a realtor and they'll leave you alone. And you can go I do that browse. Too. Yeah, you can People go love browse that. freely. They love I it. These are other agent yeah. repellent cards. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah, I go, yeah. yeah, I go there, you know, yeah, and then people are like, so oh my great. God, thank you, it works yeah. so good. And I'm like, yeah, oh, and then, and, and but always say, whether you work with me or not, here you go. And um, you always want to have that package ready to go, have all the listings open houses in the area. And then I do always give them the listings, whether they're open or not, of like a little bit above and a little bit of below that price that I, I would so be holding open. What is that? Like, 10% or something like a like hundred grand above, hundred grand yeah. above. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, because they don't know how much the house is until they go in, right? Mm -hmm. you know, unless they already planned it. So sometimes they'd be like, Oh, it's like, I remember years ago, they're like, Oh, it's seven fifty. I'm looking at six fifty. It's like, okay, great. Well, here's, um, what's for sale right now at six fifty. If you want to drive by and if any of them are open, um, here's my car. It's just mm -hmm. time you're working with me and they'll leave you alone. 
So, uh -huh. um, I just wanted to, to touch base on what you said too about the, you know, especially if you're holding open somebody's house where mm -hmm. obviously you had to ask and they let you help, you know, hold it open. You know, reiterating the fact that it's, you know, there will be a lot of offers and having a yeah. good working relationship with the listing agent who's letting you hold yeah. the house open is, you know, really good. I'll usually say, I'm the buyer's agent for this property. And they'll say, well, yeah. what's that? And I go, well, it means that, you know, I'm going to bring in the buyer. Now, if you're working with somebody, that's totally fine, you know, but I'm quite wonderful. And it's always, <laughs> it's always good to have a, a good working right. relationship yeah. with the, uh, you know, what have our buyer's agents do too, is that what, we, what I would tell them to say is um, the listing agent, because uh, a lot of times they'll still say, well, do you work with the listing I want to go to the listing agent. Because why I work with the listing agent, I'm the buyer's agent. She does not represent buyers on her own listings. Yeah. But, um, she does have designated buyer's agents that she is willing to work with. Yeah, that's a great way to oh, phrase it. Designated buyer's agent that she yeah. is willing to work with, and she allows them to hold the homes open so that they can find the buyer. Yeah, people, people. And by the way, that's that. a true story on my list. I yeah. stopped representing both sides because it was just such a hassle, and yeah. agents thought you were being scandalous. You know, and it's yeah. like opens you it up. just wasn't yeah. worth it anymore. You know, and um, mm -hmm. and so it was just it was easier for me, and then it also helped the buyer's agent. Mm -hmm. Make money. So yeah. in that package, you have other open houses in the area, mm -hmm. uh, listings that are above the below. I always have comparables for that open house, okay. other open houses in the area, and then other things on the market above and below. Okay. Yeah. And then I usually, before they do this package, I usually also have a thank you card in there and a uh, lottery ticket. Oh my gosh! I love when people do yeah. that. There's and only I've only seen one agent do it in the Newport area. Yeah. The lottery ticket, but I love when people do it's that. It's a dollar, and usually oh you need like twenty. That is brilliant. Yeah, you can use them again on your other ones if you don't. Yeah. yeah. But I would do like um, chance to win a million dollars. It's a great. Been? It's a great <laughs> way too to also promote your open house online. Yeah. Um, put our open house away, lottery and tickets. you have a chance to win a million dollars, and oh. you have the million dollar scratchers or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question. So it's, it's, yeah, and that's how I got an assignment. And I take ten percent of your winnings. Yeah, ten percent of your winnings. Yeah, ten percent yeah. 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 kickback. This is a uh -huh. little um, specific, but um, mm -hmm. more to me. But as far as I, I used to do the like inventory, as far as you know, the product inventory. Uh -huh. But now that um, I have an app, I've just been putting in the like information on the app, and that you can see what's open today and, and all of that. Do you think I should still do the print? I love tangible. Yeah. Okay. They need something to take with them. Yeah. They're going to keep it. Okay. And they're going to have it on their dining room table. Okay. And the chances of them using you because of the tangible thing is okay. so much greater than the app. Okay. Oh, it, is. It, it, it really is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. As much as techy as we are, yeah. it, it the tangible thing. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Okay. And I figured yeah. one extra thing, too, would be... And Good. nobody else is doing it. Yeah. It's, I mean, I, I, I can't even believe even back when that was the thing to do, people weren't doing it. Yeah. So okay. you want to have a package, like a folder, be able to do the first in folder, your own branding folder, mm -hmm. and have all that information in there. Um, I have like sold folders, like I would have fun with it, um, but I usually use branded folders. Like yeah. My own brand. Um, so timing, let's talk about that. Oh, this is a really good one. Yeah. So the timing one, I'm going to tie in with the rates too, okay? So a lot of times, we're, let's talk buyer first. Okay. And this is what we're gonna also be talking about in the meeting tomorrow morning. By the way, the meeting tomorrow morning is at nine before the brokers open. Um, much much more change. appropriate time for um, a meeting for this area. Yes. Yes. So, um, and if you have a brokers open tomorrow, I want you guys to pitch it at the meeting. I so like that come. too. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, that's what we did in LA. It's like, you know, picture me and then we all go And we to all it. go. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then, you know, everyone's supported. It's a yummy culture kind of building thing too. Okay, so timing. If it's a buyer right now, what you need to be understanding and what they need to be understanding is the math and the numbers. So, because this we went over this yesterday too, is let's say uh, they think, oh, the prices are going to go down. Well, historically, and especially if you're looking in this area, how much really do you think that the percentage points are going to go down in the price? So let's say it's a it's a condo where that condo is not going to go down a hundred grand, right? Mm -hmm. It it I mean we would really have to have a horrific problem in our country for that to happen, and there isn't really any room. The government and the lending hasn't really allowed room for us to have a crash like that mm -hmm. because it's been so regulated in the last few years. So for us to have that kind of crash where something, the market's just gonna go down a huge percentage point is 
it's not likely. Will the market go down? Probably. It's probably going to stable out a little bit, but you're talking like, what, 3% mm -hmm. or something? So what they need to understand is even if the price went down a little and they think they're going to save something, the rates are going to go up, and that is our guarantee. Okay? So the federal government has already promised us. <laughs> they haven't threatened us. They promised promise. us that they're going to raise the rate. Now, when you raise a rate, an interest rate, it, it um, affects your buying power. Right. So although a home may become $25,000 less in price, even $50,000 less in price, due to the interest rates going up on what you can qualify for, mm -hmm. you have lost 100000 in yeah. buying power. That's a lot of house. In one point, did you say? Or what? Um, well, it depends on how they qualify because uh -huh. it's very, I mean, you actually have to get approved now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you actually, yeah, yeah. they want you to be able to pay them back. <laughs> yeah. So, so and, and that's why I'm going to have the lender talk tomorrow too. And he did send everyone a video out at the cost of waiting. Mm -hmm. um, because the interest rate is the key thing if they are getting a loan. That is, it's going to kill their buying power. So a half a percent interest could really cost them as far as qualifying 100000 in buying power. Now, there's a big difference between 700 and 800 in a house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A big difference. And let's say 900 and a million, right? It's it's just a, it's a different it's a, it's another bedroom. Yeah. Um it's a bigger lot or a view, okay? So when views are usually ranked between 50,000 and 500,000 mm -hmm. depending on the view of the value of the view, they could be um, getting the same house but no view because yeah. of 100,000 in buying power. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, is that like something that anybody could understand? Mm -hmm. And But you've got to really know those numbers. And I would get them bullet pointed and have a sheet for them. But this is what you lose in buying power when the rates go up this much. Should we have maybe the lender much? bullet point I will, too? yeah. That'd be so helpful. Absolutely. And because it is so significant. I, yeah. I used to be in lending, so believe me, yeah. a half a percentage point is a huge difference in buying power. Yeah. And the the homes are not gonna go down the same amount. Right. So it's not gonna be even, it's not gonna come out in the wash. Mm -hmm. Um in the last several years it's came out in the wash. Yeah. And it's not doing that now. So um and, and I just don't see it. Do you see it happening? No. No, I, I just I don't. Know. Um so can I ask mm -hmm. you a question on interest rates? So at the at the at the higher end, let's mm -hmm. just say at some price point in luxury, how much is that how much is this kind of group of people in that segment really affected by changing an interest? Of interest? So now that's another that's another topic too. That's yeah. an, in timing. Um, so what you want to talk to them about that and just go look. I, I, it, it's really I understand that you know everyone like reads the internet and they like to believe what's on the internet. Um, it, it's funny we only believe what's on the internet when we want it to be true. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? Because when you're, have you ever been sick? And I tell my mom to stay up there and all yes. the time. Because when you're on, you know, it's got tumor or cancer or something. Right. Uh, you're about to go I know. And I'm well, like, oh too. my God. She's, she's dying <laughs> tomorrow, <laughs> like every day. Yeah. So, um, well, we'll and so I would like say that, go, have you, and, and just bring that up, go, have you ever Googled headache? Like what mm -hmm. it means? Like yeah. you're dying, you know? Yeah. And, um, and, and I, would, I would honestly say that, go, look, don't people, the things on the internet are true when we want them to be true mm -hmm. because our perceptions are reality. Mm -hmm. And the thing with the high-end market, it's its own market, and they don't play by the same rules, and they don't really care about the interest rates going nope. up down, the market going up down. They're going to price their price at where they price it, and they can afford to let it sit Yeah. Down. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you can wait all you want, but when you find a home, if you are looking for a home, and that's the home you want, you buy it. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. the right time. Okay. So you need to find out, you need to keep going, why, 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 well, why are you looking to move? Why well, I want this, I want this, okay, so why are, you will, why are you willing to hold your entire life back over the maybe that you might save a couple dollars? Mm -hmm. It doesn't yeah. make sense to me. You're holding your entire, like, this is now when you have the chance to help someone change their life. Because now you're going to help them with their mindset. It's like you are holding your entire life back out of fear of saving a couple dollars. Mm -hmm. How about we talk about your wealth building and real estate? How about we talk about what you're going to save in taxes? Mm -hmm. Because what you think you're going to save in purchasing a house, you are actually going to be able to write off in your taxes now. Mm -hmm. So does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So you just have those deeper conversations and get them into reality. Be like, you know, in, in, in a nice way. Yeah. You know, don't be like, you're being stupid, but not in a really nice <laughs> way. Right? 
-hmm. It's like, you know, I, and, but, and, then, and, feel yeah. free to, and feel free to have the conversation. Again, this is why the book comes in handy. Mm -hmm. Feel free to have the conversation and go, look, what's the real reason why you're waiting? Or do you need to save more for a down payment? Um, do you need to, um, are you getting a new job? Like, what's the real situation? Because when someone's looking to buy a home, to live in a home, the time is when they're looking to buy a home, to live in yeah. a home. It's not, I'm going to wait to start my life a year from now. So what if Are it you is planning a wedding? wedding? Like, what's going on? Yeah. You know? What if it is they're waiting for their down payment? Then what mm -hmm. do you, I mean, we, now you're getting the truth. Yeah, but then mm -hmm. what, how do you, you know, if they, can, well, if they can't. No, you, you need to talk to them. Just yeah. Go, okay, great. And help them, help them figure that out. Just okay. Go, okay, great. How much do you have now? Okay, what lending have you looked at? Okay, and you really need to like go deep, deep, deep. Okay. What do you, where are you looking? What do you think you want to buy? How much do you think you want to spend? What do you want your payment to be? Okay. Because they are, they are not a lender and they're right. not a realtor. Mm -hmm. They only know what they have read on the internet, what their now expert mm -hmm. friend has told them, what their now expert <laughs> mom has told them, what their now expert sibling has told them, right? right? And what their dog has told them. I so, mean, that too many cooks in the kitchen. Exactly. So we need to take the balloon, pull it down, okay. give them this is what it is and this is what it isn't, mm -hmm. now where do we stand? So it is our job to educate them. Okay. Maybe we must teach them what the reality is. Okay, and have those conversations go, look, we get this all the time, it's my job to teach you what is and what isn't, and so at that time you can make an educated decision. I have a question on your opinion too about mm -hmm. saying, because I work with clients or lease clients sometimes, uh -huh. so usually with the interest rate, which I'm not as good with, but what I usually go with is, Hey, you're paying three thousand a month now. That's thirty-six thousand a year. How many years are you going to wait? You know, because you keep adding up that. How much do you think the price is going to go down? And how long have you been renting? So three years. That's a hundred thousand. So I use that. One thing I also love: if you know you're paying three thousand a month, I would, I, would, I would really make it a good reality. Go, you're paying three thousand a month, and and when, I'm just throwing numbers out there because I, I don't know for sure. But do you know that's um, that's an eight hundred thousand dollar home? Hmm. Yeah. Make it real. That's an eight hundred thousand dollar home. Well with the yeah. what if they're percentage, paying five with thousand twenty percent down. Let's say they're paying five thousand a month, thirty that's a two million dollar home. With twenty percent down. Oh yeah, they would need to yeah. Okay. Pay, yeah. But yeah, no people don't realize. They don't realize it. Yeah. So make it real. Make it okay. real. That's good. Does that sound better? That's cleaner. Yeah, it's much cleaner. Yeah, because I do that a lot of times when I'm coaching people. Teams are like, I want it because I've had my own offsite office. Mm -hmm. If I'm thinking of having an offsite office, like, okay, this is what it's going to cost you. And they're like, okay, and I go, do you realize that's a um, that's the mortgage on a two million dollar home? Yeah. Are you including a month. all expenses for that, or just paying up? Um, I all expenses. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to you want to do principal, principal, interest, and taxes. Mm -hmm. So all yeah. expenses on a three thousand dollar payment is a. I, I just threw the number. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I have no idea. So, um, whatever yeah, but you want to be on whatever the interest what, rate is you know now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just know it and go. That's what that is. And there's uh, so many programs now too where the, if you if they have like that study and I do think that would be like eight hundred thousand dollar home now. Yeah, that, that no, that sounds right. right. Yeah, because I kind of just I'm like the interest rates where they are now and this this and this and knowing what I paid on a mortgage, I'm like that's probably eight hundred thousand dollar home. Oh yeah, you're right. It is. And your taxes, no, it is your more like six. Home right, it depends on if they have yeah. the HOAs, which depends on where you're buying. Yeah. Right? yeah. So if you go, mind you, for the last whatever so many years, I was a South County person. So you're not going to have like, a lot of, you get more for your buck. You're not going to have a lot of the double HOAs and the high tax rates and mm -hmm. things like that. So um, it would so be a little bit different. Up yeah. here, especially like Ladera or whatever, you know, oh, you're, man. you're like, mm, yeah. yeah. So. so we're going through something right now where we have a client and he, we're looking at a $9,000 a month um, home for them. And they're kind of dipping their feet into Irvine. We got them into their rental here in Central Park West, but okay. we're, they're kind of having doubts on buying. So okay. they just want to get set on renting, but $9,000 a month is a lot. That's crazy. Yeah. So for how do we, rent? For rent, yeah. In Lugan Altura. In that new community. Yeah, new community. Yeah. yeah. So oh, Quell Hill area. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. So, uh, For nine thousand? Is it some like it must be like to the nine? Some some of them are even higher. Yeah. Yeah. Nine thousand a month. You're going crazy. The, the owner, the owner do they want free. that area, Laguna Altura? The owner just well, they, purchased that's the problem. They don't know. His mortgage okay. is sixteen thousand. Okay. okay. So here's <laughs> nine thousand a month for rent. Wow. Um. 
So you want to talk to them about that and make it real, like what could they buy and have at nine thousand dollars a month? Because I can tell you, and I don't know why they would rent there for nine thousand a month. I had ocean front for seventy five. Yeah, you know, it was like, I mean, would you rather just be in my yes. sand? The sand, it's a front yard, you know. <laughs> so well, I mean, you want to show them other things. Five thousand square feet. Five thousand square feet. Yeah. They need so five it's, it's, it's a big they need home. Five bedrooms. Yeah. They like the school district, but they they would not be able to buy that home and get out the door at nine thousand dollars a month. Really? Okay. The guy um, just bought it and his mortgage is sixteen grand. That's just the mortgage. How much is wow. That? Okay. They just bought it for two point eight three. Yeah, two eight. Yeah, two eight. Oh yeah. So are they willing to live in another area? What about like what school is it? They have pretty pretty obviously if you're you have nine thousand dollar, ten thousand dollar lease, you have pretty lavish taste. And yeah. so they need a they need a property that's going to, you know, have all the bells and whistles. Are so they willing to put money into it to make it about like bells and whistles property? They, probably not. Really? Yeah, for convenience sake, they're they're pretty. Okay. So they're just trying to get a feel of Irvine. So right. Well, are they new like, the area? Um, they're new. They're new. Okay. okay. Um. So it's like, how do we? But we feel like. So as a human like, being, I totally understand uh, wanting to fill the area because yeah. I did that before too. Yeah. Um. Hmm. He's also in finance. He's in so finance. he's a fairly savvy investor. He owns he's a real estate. Yeah. So he's not. You know, he's not new to this. And okay. so we've been very easy to into it. And no, he's planning on buying in here. Is there more rooms in the game? Okay. So that's the thing. Okay. They are planning you on guys buying. So what I would do, or what's, your, what's your guys' Beans? objection now? Do you want to get them to each or do you but want to try to get them to buy all now? the space you'd need? I think in it's more like, how do I, yeah, we because they're saying, he's waiting for the market to go down. That's the picture. So it's what I would do is I would send them the video of the cost of waiting. And um, and then I would also do the numbers for them, mm -hmm. so that they can see that what they could lose in buying power. Because even though he's in finance, sometimes when we do our own stuff, we're not as good at it. And does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like, have you ever negotiated for someone else and you're just like a rock star? You mm -hmm. negotiate for yourself and like <laughs> so, pay way yeah. too much because you're so yeah. emotional about it. Yeah. So. Um, like I would never represent myself ever again as a buyer because I like totally get wind for I'm like, oh, I'm not sick as is, and I just like, what the hell, right? You know? So um, I'm like, oh my god, that's so stupid. That's assuming he's not a cash buyer. Yeah, right? yeah. So well, I mean, usually, he's not. usually if you get like a three thousand dollar a month, that's pretty typical. Mm -hmm. And we usually just the objection that we use is that when you're renting, you are assisting in, in someone else's wealth right. versus right. your own. So three thousand dollars a month, you know, thirty, you know, you can do the math about four thousand. Or forty thousand dollars a year, you right. know that property that you can buy today, where it's going to be forty thousand dollars richer next year. Well, you, you why don't you have that conversation with them about okay, if you're going to rent for now, you're going to buy in a year, which don't let go of them, right? Because I because I have had people where I did find them rentals and they did buy in a year, mm -hmm. um, and they were filling out Irvine. It was like it's kind of a, Irvine's not a place where people do want to feel out, which would be yeah. exact area they want to live in. so huge. Yeah, it is so big. They're, they're coming so, so, yeah, and so in all the schools and everything. So um, you may want to do that, but you may want to talk them into doing an investment property so that they can um, somebody else can invest in their wealth. So while they're looking, why don't you buy buy a condo and start making money off of it and uh, rent it out or something? I mean, you can have all different kinds of conversations mm -hmm. about that. Um, the first conversation I would have, I would I would definitely um, like I I go you know I just want to make sure that we're showing you. All the different areas based on what you really want. Mm -hmm. So, um, do you have time for a quick conversation for me to like get a virtual tour, basically, of the home you're looking for? I need to know what's in your head, and then just go out the street. What's it look? I mean, this is the best way to deal with the buyer. We, the street. Done that. You've done that. You already know everything. In, in his okay. position at work, you know, he run. He's opened up his 15th office in Irvine, and okay. he needs people to. He needs to be able to entertain. Okay. So they bring people over his house and everyone gets the wow factor, right? Like, oh wow, I want to be like Paul. Right. So he needs that. So you, you can't walk into his house and be like, oh, this is like a total cookie cutter family. Does he like um, Turtle Ridge or Shady Canyon? Yeah, we've been shooting Shady Canyon yeah. and Turtle Ridge, so he likes them both. Okay. And now he's interested in the Altera. So he likes both those. But the home actor has to really be dialed in. Well, that's why, okay. uh, you know, sometimes I feel like you pay extra, although this one's priced. High, but once you have all that space, the Taggart one in, in, in Turner Rock, it's gated, it's really nice, really beautiful. The backyard, it looks out on like wilderness, if you will. Like, there's nobody looking in, it's got a pool. I mean, it needs 
all cosmetic, but all cosmetic. So if they want to pour like, you know, 200, 300, anywhere in there, they can make it to the nines and have the footprint that they need. So they will sell this present. So three, two. But there's no Melaroos in there. What they may want to do if they are gonna if they are for sure dead set on, on leasing, you know, conversation you could have is one, if they are gonna lease, I would have a clause in the lease for them to get out. Um, yeah. That you guys would be able to find them another uh, tenant quickly. Yeah. And that they could have a buy on the lease. Um yeah, and you sure. want to have the conversation with them, look, I, I don't know how much of a commitment you'd want to make with the lease because here's the situation. What you want, so do a lot of other people, that's why there's not many of them. And when they do come up, I just want you to be prepared to not be the only buyer that's going to want it, whether it's now or a year from now. So even if you wait, there's no guarantee you get that house. Yeah. And I know this sounds crazy, but yeah. this, this home price of 9000 is actually a good deal. Oh, probably, so yeah. We're going to yeah. get both applications, so if we try yeah. to start dictating terms and putting clauses in, oh, really? it's probably, you know. Okay, gotcha. Um, and he, he, he actually really likes it, so he wouldn't want to lose it. His home right, home. exactly. So that's okay. going to be one over. Okay. Well, then at that at that time, you, you, I mean, if they do find something, then at that, I mean, it, it's pretty yeah. easy. If you find someone a tenant, they're gonna let you out the lease. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Um. But uh, so cross that bridge if you ever come to it. But I, I would I would have that conversation of you know if that one house comes up, I just want to let you know you're not gonna be the only buyer for it. Just like you're not the only tenant wanting this lease. Right. But you need to understand yeah. these things are flying off the shelves. Well, we put them in a great position okay. to want to buy. We showed them the only model that was left in the vanilla era, and. <laughs> I mean, it was decked out. I mean, the place was incredible. Toll Brothers, like, really dialed it in. And, but, I mean, it's 4.3 at a discounted price. And, uh, you know, you got two of the, my, the Anaheim Ducks moving in on the same street. Right. And so, I mean, it's really nice. Mm -hmm. But you could tell that their mentality after was, you know, would you like to consider this? And they're like, you know, let's probably focus on the rent. So I think that okay. at this point in time, they like to entertain the options and see the homes. Okay. But they're probably not willing to take it the extra step and actually buy. Okay. Um... But I would, just keep, I would just keep having that relationship. They will eventually buy. Yeah. And they will buy with you if you don't let go of the relationship. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I would farm them, farm them, farm them, and email them, email, email them. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, is what they'll do is they'll be really good for referrals. Yeah. No, so, yeah. We're, yeah. We're mainly focused okay. on the relationship. We actually have already built a really good cool. connection with them. So. Awesome. It's, I think it's just worth that maybe just to let them fill yeah. it out. Yeah. 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 But yeah. I can't tell you, I did the same thing in, um, in the South Bay. I... I Kept moving around to different Airbnbs to fill out the really? different cities. Yeah, for six mm -hmm. months I lived Whoa, in Airbnb wow. just because I'm like I don't know where I want to live. Yeah. When you're new to an area, you don't know. I date it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, let's, let's date. Yeah, yeah. You do the same thing in cars. Yeah. You can live in a car for a day and you can rent whatever. Party exactly. You want for a week even. Well, and actually, in Atlanta, Atlanta River, if you had a previous one, the, I, you can pick one and go. Can I have that car for the day? I'm I'm trying to see which one I want to buy, and they will let you do that. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that might be, it might just be the way it is. Okay. Yeah. Um, now on commissions, did that guys help you with timing as far yes. as Yeah, awesome. a lot. Okay. Okay. So if they, if they are waiting to for a down payment, just kind of leave it, leave it alone. Or if they don't have You want to talk payment. to them and, and, and have them talk to a lender, and, and you also want to walk them through saving for that down payment and kind of be their accountability partner. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So real quickly before we do commissions, let's do mobile homes. So we'll get through that one real quick. Because that one shouldn't take too long. Um, <laughs> so, um, there's a, so what kind of mobile home? Is it a manufactured lease land home or is it an actual mobile home like the kind you could move? It's an actual mobile home. And where where is it? It's in Huntington. Huntington, okay. okay. Um, totally understand. Now, the things that you want that make them understand, go look, this is going to be, you're going to pay a lease on top of it. At least it's pretty expensive. Yeah, it meant to be still like anywhere between 1000 mm -hmm. and 2000 Yeah, mm -hmm. you're going to pay a lease on top of this that you're not, this is not, I don't think that's, you can write it off on your taxes either. I think it's just, it's like I'm in an apartment. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, and you're going to have this, this mobile home. But uh, what they need to understand is there was only usually, I think, one, there, there's only like maybe one or two lenders in the United States that will even lend on a mobile home. Really? And you have to put like 50% down if you don't yeah. have no cash. So yeah. they got to know that because a lot of people don't understand that going in. Um, and really find out uh, why they want a mobile home. And then this is another thing. I'm so sorry, but this is a good thing to do. Go online. Go on. Uh, what's that? Is it Megan's Law? Whatever. Yeah. Oh. It's going to oh, light up like a freaking Christmas <laughs> Really? <laughs> Yeah. Whoa. So the owners of those plots of lands that those whole homes sit on are uber rich. 
Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. There's well, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. The thing is, I wonder if, if you did the numbers as far as what if they if they weren't opposed to if they you know living in something that didn't move, um, if they'd be saving any money based on I mean the amount you have to pay per month and they is might crazy. be it's and, like, this is, and this is again where you have the opportunity to help a person. Okay. So what you want to go, go, you know, we are what we surround ourselves with and mm -hmm. no judgment or anything. I'm not mm -hmm. knocking mobile homes and sometimes there's senior mobile home parks that are really mm -hmm. great you live by the beach. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if this person's a senior, is this person a senior? Not yet. Okay. So, uh, we're all going to be one day, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. You're trying not to yeah. 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 So, the situation we oh, want yeah. to talk to them about is one, I would, I would always pull up the Megan's Law database just so they can yeah. see who lives there. You know, this is what you're going to be surrounded by here. And um, you're going to be surrounded by other people that this was all that they could afford. I'd rather see you somewhere else where you're surrounded by people that are trying to build their life to the next level. Um, or people that are empty nesters now and they're living here. Somewhere where you're in an environment that's going to be um, more to lift you up. Does that make sense? Yeah. You really do have a chance to help someone change their life here. But sometimes people settle or some people have tossed themselves in that that's all they're worth. Mm -hmm. That is all, that for whatever reason, that they think that they have like, oh, I can't afford this, and now they think this is all they're worth. And, and, and it's, it's human, it's just human. And we wanna, we wanna let people know, we wanna help them with their self-worth. And uh, they may end up leasing an apartment or something for a while. But if they can afford a condo, I mean, leases are huge in Huntington. Mm -hmm. They could probably actually afford at least a condo or townhome, which they would have um, a better environment and not all the tribal investors in the world living there. That's yeah. good. That's, yeah. that's good. And then people <laughs> yeah. that are looking at mobile homes, they don't understand the logistics and the numbers. So when yeah. you bring out the tax benefits and the equity that increases every year, yeah, yeah. they'll be in understanding because the mobile home at the end of the day, unless you're a really prime area, it's an appreciated asset. So you know, those things fall on the ground yeah. after like 40 years, they don't last. So if you go from that way and you break down the numbers, because they don't even realize how expensive the leases are once all those payments add up and you have to qualify, you have to make three times the lease payment income. So you can't just, you know, get cash and go to a mobile home with no income. You, know, you have to really actually qualify for it. Just to park your yeah. mobile home. So in order to purchase that mobile home, you have to go through the mobile home management mm -hmm. for approval. And you have to get approval from that too. Yeah. Approval income come about three times. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, I mean, it, it was funny. I had one, I had this house that was in this Westminster or something at one point, and it had a brick wall. Behind this brick wall was a mobile home park, and it was also a freeway close. <laughs> And I'm like, I don't know if this is kid friendly, <laughs> you know? I'm like, the know, freeways exactly. right there, yeah. And there's a mobile home park. And I'm like, if you go on Megan's Law, it's gonna light up like Christmas tree. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it's, but it is a really, yeah, because that's where a lot of them, um, they move in with someone or they rent a room from someone or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, it just is what it is. But you wanna, you wanna make sure you look that up. Because you don't usually see mobile home parks close to schools. And uh, people that have, are registered sex offenders have to, can't live in a certain yeah. proximity to like schools and um, certain other areas. So yeah, something you always want to look up. And you'd be surprised if you do your house, like how many there are that you're like, oh my god, my neighbor. And, really? Um, yeah. We had one where it was, an, um, one of my agents had one where the next door neighbor was, and he, he had fell out of five times. Um, oh. Oh man. Yeah. And he's like, what do I do? I go, there's a Jack Park or Jill. You call every investor you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was like, they got, that's all you're going to be able to do. Yeah. Um, okay, so commissions. Let's talk about that. So let's say uh, we're on a listing one, and I really highly recommend again that you do, um, that you look at the other tapes because I go into more depth on it. Um, when you talk, commissions actually, it, when I'll do a listing appointment class in commissions, and I'll show you how commissions never come up, so it won't even be a, a thing anyway. Um, but if they ask you, okay, so what do you charge for commission? Six percent. Okay. So and then, and then you just keep on going, right? Um, I actually answer that if someone were to call me on the phone and ask me, I would answer on the phone too. I still got the appointment, still got the listing. Um, people just don't want to be lied to, or fooled, or sold, or anything. Mm -hmm. um, what it is is if you say it with conviction, you have that fierce conversation, right? Um, they're not going to ask you. Your vibe is really going to dictate what happens next. Mm -hmm. So if you're like, well, six percent, but it's negotiable, or California's negotiable, well, guess what you're getting? Yeah, <laughs> like negotiated yeah. commission, right? So if you just go with conviction, this is what it is, and um, and go, do you understand how commission works? Do you, did you have questions on it? Mm -hmm. 
Oh, yeah. Well, well, we split in half. We we give a certain amount to the uh, other broker for the buyer side, and that's how the buyer's agent and the buyer's broker gets paid. And uh, I wish I get to keep it all. I don't. I do reimburse myself for the marketing and everything at the end um, because I front everything. And then our company, and by the way, this never usually comes up, but if it ever does, it's a good way to explain it. Um, our company takes their cut. Uh, there's also the franchise marketing fee that takes their cut. Our you know, insurance, our TC, or <laughs> yeah, <totally laughs> I, 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 I know everybody wants a piece, so, uh, you know, so that's how the commission mm -hmm. works. Do you have any other questions regarding that? You know, and they're really not probably going to ask any questions from there. Um, if they say, well, so-and-so, and by the way, I've had this one come all the time, even with Tim Smith, they said, well, so-and-so offered 5% mm -hmm. or 4% or whatever. Well, that's great for them. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that, that's great. However, if I, can't, if I can't fight for my own business and my own bank account, mm -hmm. you should never give me your listing. You should never give your a largest financial asset to someone that doesn't have enough self-respect for their own business. Now, if you really want me to do the math for you, are talking about 1%, okay? So we've got 1% here on, um, let's say, let's just use a million so it's easy. You're talking $10,000, okay? For a discount broker, you're going to lose a heck of a lot more than $10,000 in negotiation power because I, I'm really good at negotiating for myself. I'm really good at negotiating for you too. Now, if I don't have skin in the game and I've already been, someone's already showed me, you know, that they don't see the value in me they don't respect me, do you think I'm really gonna care on what you sell your house for? It's gonna cost you about 50 grand mm -hmm. to save 10, just so you know. Because they're already they're, they're already mad at you because you've already shown them that you don't value. Um, so my, my next question is, um, what value do you not see in me that you think that you should get a discount? Because in the absence of value, cost is an issue. Now, did I ever did I display anything that showed you that I, I was a discount broker? Now this is a really good, fierce conversation. And by the way, this rarely comes up if you do the listing appointment correctly. Mm -hmm. um, agents are the ones that create the commission yeah. um, conversation. It's usually not the seller. Every once in a while, they might say, well, can you cut your commission, that kind of thing. But it, your entire appointment's gonna set that up. So if you're really strong your entire th way through, it's not going to come up. Because they're just not they're just not going to the confrontation. So you got to be got to be really strong. Um, now the best way to go in with your listing is um, and also by the way this is what all our agents did and this is something that we're going to be talking about in the future too. Um, we had standards in place at, at the last company I was with and nobody could do less than five percent without my approval. So I gave them more scripts and I'm like, well, just throw me under the bus. So I, you know, our company doesn't allow that. We're not a discount brokerage, obviously we're Christie's. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, we're not healthy so. And and when you say it like that, they're gonna be like, oh, I don't want, like, you know. And I, I personally wouldn't go to a discount facelift, someone to get a facelift or a discount for <laughs> children, you know, it's just not what I would do. And I wouldn't do this for my largest financial asset either. And and so you want to you want to tell them go, but that has to be approved by our company. If you want her number, I can give you give our manager. I can give you our manager's number. Good luck. <laughs> and I would like say go. Good luck. She she's a tiger. And that's they would throw me under the bus all day. And they're like, wow, we love you. It works all day long. Nobody wants to talk to you. And I'm like, I know it's so mean, right? And so, um, but I'm just trying to help them save money. So I coach them through it. Okay. Yeah. So now on, let's say a buyer wants some of your commission. Um, one really got to work hard through the process where they wouldn't think that they were needed to commission, right? Yeah. Entitled to it. Again, you're like, you know what? That would have to be approved by our company. Mm -hmm. um, and that actually sets me up for a mm -hmm. lawsuit because if I didn't give all the other buyers a credit and I give you one, uh, that gives them a reason to come back and sue me because it's not fair to them. And I, like, if we were going to do that, we'd have to do that for everybody. And that puts our entire company in a really bad position. Puts our entire industry in a bad position. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So there's all kinds of ways you can go back at that. The, I like that. The easiest, best one is like we have to get that approved with my company. I'm going to give you the manager's number. You can call her directly. Go, so I can go and talk to her directly. I'm going to tell you right now. She's nice, but she's scary. And, <laughs> um, yeah, and just and just let her know that. So, um, and, and, and it's a thing, but they won't ask normally. They'll just be like, oh, no, it's okay, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or whatever. And, but let me know ahead of time it's happening so that I can be in the right um, mindset and I can be, because I'll always be nice and I'll never mess up your relationship with your client, okay? Um, but I will, um, I will be tough. 
I and, and explain it in a very professional way. Um, but I'll never, I'll never ruin your um, relationship. In fact, I just did one where I saved a transaction for one of our agents in here, and they're like, "Can we give you the whole commission?" I mean, it was, <laughs> and I was just like, "Oh boy, here we go." Um, they didn't want to cut the commission; they were fine with the company getting it. They were just like, "Well, you saved it." And I was like, "It's okay. It's my job. I think you need to do this." Right? So it was, um, it was funny. But yeah, if, as long as you're doing your job, it should never come up. Um, but always just real, be really strong in your self-respect um, for yourself. Uh, when you go, and again, when you go in for your listing appointment, what you do is you ask them, go, why am I here today? Like, we're here to list my house. I, I know I'm going to list your house today. Right? Do you see my body language? I know I'm going to list your house today. However, I also know that nobody lists their house unless there's a change in their life, um, whether it's something good or something bad. We don't know. So I just want to know um, what plan we're going to do. Each situation is different, and um, the direction we're going to go is going to depend on the reason why we need to sell today. And, um, and then you shut up and never speak until they are out of breath. And they're going to, their physiology is going to change, they're going to tell you their whole life story because you're going to stay silent. And, set, and it's, it's the one that stays silent longest wins, okay? Because silence is very uncomfortable. And they're just, even when they think they tell you everything, stay silent. And then they will start talking again, right? Because people cannot handle silence. And this is also in your Fierce Conversations book. Um, by the end of it, they are now vulnerable. And you've created a bond plus a trust factor, but they have to list with you now because they are not going through this again. Okay? It's like a first date. They are never going to tell anybody the resume of their life again. You know too much. And they can't let you out of that door either. You know, like you just know too much. You now are related. So yeah. you uh, and when you do this and you have someone vulnerable, commission will not come up in the future. Because they're too vulnerable. You've already broken down. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And we talked about this, but this is mm -hmm. not the approach for investors, correct? No. Okay, it's different, right? You investors are numbers, they don't care. Okay. They don't care about anything. Yeah. 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 Money. Bottom line. Yeah. My, with investors, you're going to be hard as nails. Mm -hmm. You're going to be you're going to be tougher than they are. That's how you work with an investor, and you're and you're going to let them know that uh, your time's valuable, just as valuable as theirs, mm -hmm. and they're going to sign an agreement. Yeah. Um. Okay. And then. Neighborhood Specialist HOA, we're over a little bit, but I'll go through this real quick. Um, so in this, I really, really, these are really good ones to do. Um, the HOA, um, like if they say, well, they're really involved in the HOA, I'd be like, ooh. Like say, kind of like that, they're like, what? That's like the last person you ever want as your listing agent. Do you want everyone knowing your business? Mm -hmm. Not me, because it's true, right? Do you want everyone knowing your business? Every, if you think they're not going to be telling the whole world every single second of this transaction in your financial state, you're, you're crazy. Um, actually, the people with the HOA, they think they know everything so much that they can actually really, really hurt your sale and put you um, in jeopardy of a lawsuit, and which someone can come back to you in the next four years. Um, because they think they're doing a good job by telling them all these things. Don't tell them. Give them HOA docs and let them read it. <laughs> yeah, right? Let them read it. They may not read it. But when someone's so active in HOA, they want to, they want to appear knowledgeable, significant, and important. It's human nature. And they're going to give them all this information, but they're not going to give them the facts. They're going to give them the story. They're going to give them the emotion. They're going to give them the drama, and it's not factual at all. And so what they're going to create is like this, this thought in the head. Some people are on the fence of HOAs. Some people are like, you know what? Okay, I guess I could do with an HOA, you know, but I've heard HOA nightmares, mm -hmm. right? So if they start telling things about HOA, it, it could kill your sale. Because now the HOA just scared them away. Mm -hmm. And I, there's a lot of people that just don't even want to be in a home because they don't want someone telling them what kind of flowers to plant. Yeah. Or what color house is going to be. Yep. Or how many cars are going to have in the driveway. How long you can leave a garage yeah. door open or open or whatever. So <laughs> this is not a, a person that you really want um, selling your house. And, you know, not that I'm going to break any rules, but I, in in – Generally, they want to be like this real rule follower. Sometimes, when you're having open houses and stuff, you got to break a couple rules yeah. <laughs> to get people in. You know, mm -hmm. so um, you want to talk to them about that. But another way you can also go about it with a neighborhood specialist. I completely understand that. Here's the situation: I don't like um, for my listings to compete against my other listings. So when someone has a, a bunch of listings in one neighborhood, you know, they don't care who which house they sell in the neighborhood. They're, they just care if they sell one of them. It's a numbers game for them. The only house I'm going to be concerned with is yours. And I'm going to work really, really hard to sell that house. Now, if somebody else wants to sell in the neighborhood, they're going to need to wait until I have you and escrow and contingencies are removed. Is that fair? 
you know? And they're gonna be like, oh, yeah. I go, because if someone calls them, you know, they're gonna show them all five houses they have in the market. I'm just yeah. gonna show them this one. Right? And you go that way. However, here's the flip side. Yeah. Now, yeah. Something now let's say know. if now you are the little specialist, <laughs> right? <laughs> and you're like, look, I have all these listings on the market. If somebody calls me one that's not a fit for them, I can bring them over to yours. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I know every single tra track in this, every single floor plan in this neighborhood, right? You can flip the script. Mm -hmm. um, but I always I like the ones like, I don't want to compete against myself. I usually don't take um, more than one listing in a, in a certain ways of a track at a time. Um, because I just want to be able to focus on that listing, and that's why I do it that way. So what happens if you do end up getting a listing leveraging the one you just listed? Do you really not put that one on the market? Um, and I can give them stories. It's always, it actually has always worked better when I waited till the other one had the contingencies removed. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because that person, the other one was on the market, their contingencies are removed, they want to go look at this one now. Mm -hmm. And they might be like, oh, I like this one better, and it cancels. So I usually would like, you know, let's wait for the conditions to remove mm -hmm. so that they, I don't lose this transaction because yeah. we need this comp, right? Right. Um, I did have, a, I did, um, in Turtle Ridge one time, I did have two and they were, I was friends with all of them, on the same street. Oh, man. And it sucked because um, it really was bad for me, but it was always bad for them too because one was really nicer than the other and it sold in like in a week. Yeah. And the other one, I mean, it smelled like dog pee and pineapple. Oh, and they had like these pineapple plugins. And I just finally, <laughs> and, and their, their house kept on going down, down, down because they wouldn't listen. It was really dark inside. Finally, it's like, it's not, um, it's not when I'm going to sell your home. It's like, if I'm going to sell your home, you need to rip out our carpet and put the floors in. Let's do this, you know? And that's what ended up happening. But the other one had the wood floors. They were both end units too. Um, so it was just, it wasn't a really good thing. And yeah. I was competing against myself. Yeah, yeah. that's and, so hard. Yeah, yes. and so you can give them a start. I was competing against myself. It really just caused all kinds of problems. They were friends, I was friends with them. And um, it would have been better. I should have listed this one first, let it go into escrow, and then list this one that I knew would sound weak. Oh. Um, so go, that was a hard, and, and be vulnerable, but that was a hard lesson for me. You yeah. can put me in a class again, go, my manager told me the story, yeah. it's a hard lesson for her, you know, and because in hindsight, it really did, they were so dead set on it though, but it did cost them money, and had they have gone on first and the other people been willing to wait, mm -hmm. um, it would have it been better. So, and it was in a time where there was a lot in the market, Turtle Ridge, and it just wasn't selling very well. Mm -hmm. um, so. And the lovely ones where the stairs are right when you open the door and they go straight up. Oh, oh yeah. Those are so fun. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally bad. Yeah. Yeah. Totally bad from Shway. I'm like, why did they do that now? in Irvine? I know. What were they thinking in Irvine? I was like, you idiots. You know um, somebody was very zen. Yeah, exactly. Happy. So there's that part. I can tell you real quick if um, if you want to stay, if you have to leave, I totally understand. Um, the first team thing that that house didn't sell. Mm -hmm. um, so what you want to do is you want to be prepared as you're going in if there is a first team listing nearby the mm -hmm. house didn't sell. Okay, you want to find out why. So well, as go as you know, everyone has a certain situation. Um, each listing has their own situation of why um, they're going on the market, and each house is different inside. Have you been inside? And you can actually tell them. Um, it, it, find out the reason. And sometimes the reason goes. You know. Um, it, this is this is actually a really good lesson for you to make sure that you listen to us <laughs> um, Because when someone doesn't listen to you one on price they can chase the market down and it won't sell because price is usually the number one factor On this one it was very hard to show there was a divorce um, mm -hmm. They wouldn't let us in so if we can't get in the house we can't sell the house And that's one of the reasons why I didn't sell so I'm just giving you reasons why they don't sell yeah. um, They have three cats um, they weren't very clean and um, the house does smell like they were nose cat. Yeah, they, yeah, they were nose blind. I smelled it. Every other buyer saw, smelled it too, mm -hmm. and it was really a turn off. Mm -hmm. um, and not one cat person lived at that house. It was all dog people, and so <laughs> yeah. nobody, you know. But I mean, you can come up with a reason. Okay. Again, you just go that one face this way. This is an area where um, uh, prominent um, buyers are really into feng shui, and they needed the door. That you know, whatever you could come up with yeah. all different reasons. And every single person that came in there came with a compass. And um, it for just sure wasn't facing. working for yeah. them. Or the, it could be the number of the house. This number of the house doesn't work for the demographic in this area. Uh -huh. um, there's all different kinds of reasons. And I go, and that was that was our biggest that was the biggest complaint of that listing. Most likely, it's the price. Okay, you go. You know what? Um, they were just feeling out the market. Threw a price out there that wasn't reasonable. Yeah. And it didn't sell. It didn't sell. Okay. Um, and, and that's why too you should know before you go out 
um, what was what the problem was. What yeah. The problem was. Yeah. yeah, call the agent and just find out what's, what was the problem in itself. And like agents have called me all the time on listings like KY. Hey, so I'm like, uh, did you see the prices I had on this one? <laughs> they chase it down. You know, they're like figured, you know. Yeah. Um, so Redfin, we went over this one mm -hmm. as well on another one yesterday. Um, and we talked about that. Um, again, I go to negotiation power. They're going to give you one and a half percent. They, I mean, they got no skin in the game. They don't care. It's going to cost you a hell of a lot more than one and a half percent negotiation power. You're going to pay. You will pay that one and a half percent and more. Uh, you, you just don't think you are. And then just, and I would do the math for them. So you're getting, uh, like 8,500 or 15,000 or whatever, but you're going to probably pay because I can tell you, any time I negotiate against a refit agent, I mean, they're, they're really soft. Mm -hmm. um, they they probably pay 50 grand more than a, than a, um, a really seasoned agent. With, so how, with does refin, for how do they market if they're only charging 1%? It's all, it's an online um, that's platform. It. So that's the only yeah. thing they do. Yeah. It's their own platform. They're really syndicated out. Mm -hmm. yeah. so there's no real marketing yeah. strategy. For yeah, them. and they're, they don't care. This is a relationship business. I care. I care. I, I work out for referrals. They don't work out for referrals. I work out for referrals. I have to do a really great job for you and walk you through this process. That's not going to happen. Um, and again, like lawsuits, this is the most litigious state. Lawsuits happen all the time. And you, you've got to make sure you're with a really strong brokerage. Yeah. They leverage yeah. the tech end of Redfin. Mm -hmm. So they leverage yeah. that. And so they don't make a full commission. Now, and a lot of times thing, Redfin agents aren't even full time. They're not. They're usually part time. One thing I can't and go and have they sold any homes. That's one thing I would say. I go a lot of times. Redfoot agents are you're going to be their first. Yeah. And I don't want to be someone's first brain surgery. I'm telling you right now, I don't. So you got to go like go in like that. But also to have them define like I'm going to use Redfin. Don't assume or, or I'm looking or I've been using Redfin, right? Because my clients say that all the time. I've been using Redfin. Don't assume that means they're working with Redfin. No, because yeah. um, I I go, oh, I've heard that. I've heard that's a really good site to um, look for Search home signs. And like, yeah, I go, uh, yeah, I go. I don't care where you look. You can look on my website, or I can send you a drip. It doesn't matter where you look for. I'm just let me know when you see one that you like. I'm also gonna hand pick some for you, but I'm gonna go through the MLS. Yeah. And yeah, and that's all they meant was that yeah. how they were looking for them. <laughs> they weren't using a Redfin agent. Oh, but some of them actually say they're using a Redfin agent, and then they'll okay. bring up, and we ask. Why? I'm just curious. Why would you work with a Redfin agent? And then we, you know, yeah. And you know, I like the way you said you that. Okay, okay, so when you said, "Why would you work with a Redfin agent?" You know, yeah, yeah, yeah and then out. They'll, they'll yeah. say the commission. Oh, we were flipping through homes, and we saw we can get five grand back if we, you know, wrote the offer with this Redfin agent, or if they're selling their home, we can get, you know, ten thousand dollars discount commission if we sold with the Redfin agent. So that would be the objective. Uh, okay. So what do you do when, when you've got a buyer? That's looking at using Redfin. It's going to cost them more than five thousand dollars, though. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's the thing. There's so yeah, no negotiation. Yeah, it's going to cost them a lot more than that. That's I usually just like to say I use an example. I use a lot of examples with when I handle objections. So mm -hmm. actually, my insurance agent, who is like the top insurance agent in the whole county, is a Redfin agent. So, oh, like, right. do, you, do you think that if you work with someone like this, he's going to be, you know, working 100% to find your home, or is he going to be dealing yeah. with my insurance because right. I'm home? I, he's going to be I do my like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and they're not going to negotiate the price down mm -hmm. for you if they're only earning one percent. They want that price as high as they can get it. So well, and it's also something. internet based. So they don't have any training. They're not studying mm -hmm. the market. They don't have an office that they go to, so they have no idea what's going on. They're definitely not area specialists. Um, but you also want to. Um, I mean, you definitely want to find out, you know, why, or you know, you're just going to get anybody. <laughs> They're just going to hand you anyone. I don't know if this person's going to be around in a year or not. What if you get in a lawsuit later? Yeah. yeah. And some of them are actually good. Some of the reputation is Right. Guys, but another, them are not. another thing, one of the things, and this is true, um, the only time I would really take an offer from a Redfoot agent is if it was the only offer I got. Mm. And I feel the same way about Realty One. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Um, a lot of the reasons you can, and you can just say that, just go, it's because, look, it's going to be harder on the listing agent. You're going to have a harder time getting your offer approved um, and accepted if there's more than one offer because they know they're not a full-time agent. They know they're not seasoned. They know they're not doing a lot of this, and they know they're going to have to do all the work. And they know that agent doesn't care because that agent's only getting 1%. They have no skin in the game. 
and and the reality is, is though, yeah, that. and the reality is, we um, the industry does not respect a few of the companies in, in the industry, and we will do anything mm -hmm. in our power to not take their offers. And it's, mm -hmm. it is what it is. Real two one two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I got, if I, I would, I you know, obviously I would do the best for my client. Mm -hmm. And I would get them the best offer they could get, and if that was the best offer, obviously we would take it. But if I had options, and it was the same exact offer, mm -hmm. and I had a Christie's agent or a Redfin agent, mm -hmm. who do you think I'm going with? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going with this powerhouse mm -hmm. agent that I can the, the seller can see they're a big old company. If something happens, you know, I mean, right. that's the thing. And someone I'm gonna have a relationship with that's gonna pick up their phone. Going to answer their emails. Yeah, is going to know what they're doing. Is going to know who what inspector to call. Is going to know all these things. So yeah, I just make all those points. Yeah, Did that help? That's very great. Yes. Okay, okay, the right questions then. Good. And then I would definitely watch the other ones because there's a yeah. lot of really good and even sure. the okay. farming and stuff. Because you had a lot of objections yeah. in those. Yeah. It's just not in the objection. Yeah. Exactly. It's not like we did a good projection. Also, yeah. as you're watching the videos, uh -huh. I highly recommend oh, my body the body language, language, oh, body body language yeah. and the way she future pages. Mm -hmm. Because so much of what makes her successful at this is that she future paces them and she's always getting to look in the future mm -hmm. and the physical body language of how she says it. It's not just words. And I, I see so many agents, they try and memorize the words. So look at the attitude, the future pacing, the movement forward, things in the past, and just pay attention to those little things and you will learn so much more. And then practice those things as well as the actual scripts. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is um, in, in how to be quick. And, and just so you know, because I, I really worked hard on fine tuning the art and doing a lot of role playing, a lot of coaches and everything. Um, we were talking yesterday, I, I took, I highly recommend it, took improv. And improv is not stand up, it's um, you have to work off of someone and you have to be really engaged. And you've got to be really noticeable with body language and what they're saying, but it makes you quick. Make sure what. Mm -hmm. So I did that to really fine tune one my speaking because when I was do speaking engagements, but also my appointments. Mm -hmm. um, another thing I would recommend taking a course on is NLP um, because you're really going to know how the brain works and how the mind works and how to read body language better and how to get inside their head and be able to read them and, and get it to um, a signature. What's um, that's NLP? Really um, neurologistic programming. Yeah. You should do an NLP class. Huh? Do an NLP yeah, class? Great, great, yeah. great. Right, right. It's not just about what you say; it's how yeah, you say it. And exactly. And tonality and body language makes a huge difference. Yeah, and that's why, like, if I say, like, if I talk about an agent, I'm like, I go, I don't know what they charge, and you're pushing them out. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know about the others. So you're always nodding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when I say yes, I'm like, I understand that we're listening to your house today. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, and that and we get this a lot from our coaches, but also just like if you understand my body language and, and what I'm doing, you can tell on the tapes. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's a huge thing because you are talking them into it. They don't even know it. They don't even know it, and they're like. Because they'll start, yeah, yeah, yeah. they'll start doing this too. Like you'd be bouncing together if you do it for yeah. too long, you yeah. know. And um, but but if you notice, you just try it for fun, just on regular people, or you're at the coffee shop or something. Yeah. Hi, how are you doing? Yeah. You know. <laughs> well, yeah. When you were just nodding your head, you were. You did, you, did you? Did you start nodding? Yeah. 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 It's just a thing that happens. Mm -hmm. So no. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, that'll just perfect. It'll make you mm -hmm. that much more. Of being able to know how the the brain works and um, how we pick up things. Yeah. So I love it. I that I'm all geek down to all that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm like. Oh, Thank you so much. This You're was welcome. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you so it much. It went way too fast. Now who's in my next one? Me. Okay. Cool. Oh. What are we doing? Are we doing farming? Yep. Yes. All right. Awesome.